going to attempt something that I don't think I've done before. I haven't had quail in a long time, so, well, I had Bob White last year, but I didn't try it with them. I'm going to try to make pickled quail eggs. I've got a good sized bowl of eggs. I don't know how many is in the bowl. Uh, more than two dozen, anyway, maybe close to three dozen. Um, but the difficult part of doing anything with quail eggs, other than clipping the end off of them and dumping the egg out to fry it or scramble it or whatever, they have a membrane inside the shell which makes it very difficult to to uh, shell them once they're hard boiled. And I have just been reading online different methods that you can use. And I've chosen one and I'm going to give it a try. So we'll see what happens here. The water isn't to a boil yet. I'll bring you back when I put the eggs in and show you how I cook them, which is maybe a little bit different. It's also a method that I've used with hen's eggs. Two days in a row I've been getting one of these eggs. Must be a, one of the quail that's just started to lay, I guess. Maybe she'll continue laying an egg like it. Most unusual. A quail egg, most of these quail eggs should look like that sort of brown or greenish background with brown spots. These are sort of a bluish color with some pigmentation, little spots on them here there, but that one there seems to have a bit more maybe on that side, but you turn it over and it's a, a bluish white egg. Most unusual. Maybe she's just getting her system straightened out and it'll turn into the other kinds of eggs later on. Anyway, I'll come back when the water has come to a boil. Yeah. Counting my chickens before they hatch type thing, but now I think there's probably close to four dozen in that bowl. That's a dozen there, and uh, the bowl is just still down barely to the rim. Anyway, this thing is called a Chinese spider. Uh, one of my kitchen gadgets, and one that tends to be used, I think, more than anything else. I find lots of uses for it, but help me get the eggs in the water here. Uh, the water had just started to come to a boil, so and these eggs have been in the refrigerator, so they're really cold. It will uh, take it off the boil there quite quickly, I'm sure. But what I do, and it's nothing that I invented, it's one of the best ways to make a hard-boiled egg, uh, and I do it with with chickens' eggs. Um, put the eggs in the in the water, which was already boiling and then when it comes back to a boil I just shut the heat off you bring it back to a, a full boil and then shut the heat off and just let it cool when they're down to a temperature where you know just warm you can pick them up with your hands and start the shelling process uh, the egg then is uh, done nicely in the in the center. Some of these eggs have been here a while, and there's one right there that I'm going to discard. It floats. An egg floats. It is not fresh. So I guess that's it. I'll bring it back and show you when it's come back to a full boil. Well, that's definitely a full boil. They just came to the boil, so I shut the heat off and let them cool down so that it's tepid. You can put your hands in the water hour and a half, two hours, something like that usually with chicken eggs anyway. Probably the same with quail eggs. We'll come back at that point. I think it only took a little over an hour till they were cooled down to the tepid stage which means the egg inside is a hard-boiled egg but the very center, normally anyway, maybe cut one of these open in future to show you. The very center is still a bit soft, which is for me a perfectly done hard-boiled egg. I've drained off the water and now what you do is cover them with vinegar. I'm using white vinegar. I don't think it really matters. You could use cider vinegar. I just happen to have this big jug of, of white vinegar was using it in pickling or something, I guess. And you let it set for three hours. Uh, and what the acid in the vinegar should, should do, most vinegars, this one is 5% acid. Um, 
And I think cider vinegars are both the same. Most vinegars here in this country, anyway, are, are five percent. This should dissolve the shell, and what you are left with is just the membrane to deal with. So we'll come back in three hours and see how accurate that is. Well, it's been more like three minutes than three hours since that last clip. I forgot to say that in the instructions it says that. Uh, Leaving it longer than three hours or whatever could impart a uh, vinegar flavor to the egg, which would be a concern, I guess, if you're just going to use them in a salad or whatever. But I'm going to be pickling these in vinegar anyway, so it's not going to do any damage as far as that goes, because they will go in uh, well, straight vinegar that I use to, to pickle eggs, along with some spices and garlic and um, onion and whatever. So I'll show you that process if I ever get them peeled. It's been three hours in the vinegar, and this is kind of disgusting. <laughs> but I think it's done what it was supposed to do. This is still just vinegar I'm getting my hands in here. All the spots have come off. Um, it's, there may be some shell there, but it's a lot softer. And that greenish-white color, that's the color that you see on the inside of a quail egg when you crack it. So. I'm now going to rinse these off and get rid of all of the the spots that are floating around there and we'll see what it's like as far as uh, peeling the membrane off. Well here goes nothing. I have rinsed them and there should be yeah, a little bit of an air sac in the large end. An air sac that keeps getting larger as the egg gets older. Well, it's still a bit, you know, time-consuming, but this is working so much better than any other method I've tried with quail eggs. I usually end up with a, an egg that's looking pretty strange after I've lost parts of the side of it and whatever. These are a little bit slippery. I'm just using a pair of scissors to, to snip the, the membrane where the air sac is. Um, could do it, I guess, pinch it with your fingernails, but it would be the same thing. But I thought that small pair of scissors would work quite well. well. I am very pleased with this. This really works. Wish it was my clever idea, but it wasn't. <laughs> I'll do one more, and I won't make you watch any, any further. Bring you back uh, Preparing the pickling brine. And I have pickled quail eggs. I can't put a link to a particular method because my method is a sort of combination of several. I just put in what I like to put in and you'll see what I mean as, as I go on here. It's very forgiving. You just need to have a lot of uh, vinegar and some salt and a bit of sugar and whatever. And, and then you refrigerate them anyway, so they will, um, I don't know, most recipes say to use them up within two weeks, but I'm sure I've kept them a lot longer than that because they're in a strong vinegar solution. As long as you keep them refrigerated, they're, they're good for several weeks until they're gone. They don't last that long, so I'll bring you back at that point. That is a very easy method for peeling quail eggs. If you've ever peeled quail eggs, you'll appreciate it. If you haven't peeled quail eggs, it's hard to explain it to you, but they are difficult little things to get peeled. This did take a bit of time. I've been 15 or 20 minutes probably peeling them all, but every one of them peeled perfectly. I sliced one in two just to show you what they're like on the inside. I won't be able to pickle that one. I'm going to make the pickling brine and with the things that I add into it right now, and I'll show you that. And then they have to go in the refrigerator for a few days before you eat them so that they uh, they do get pickled. But quail eggs are so small it won't take as long as it does with chicken eggs. With chicken eggs you wait three or four days. But with quail eggs I think 24 hours, 48 hours or so would be enough. I'm going to another potluck dinner on Sunday and among the things that I take is going to be pickled quail eggs. So let's go do some pickling. Well, have I said, there really isn't a, a recipe here, but if you Google pickled eggs or even pickled quail eggs, you'll come up with 
dozens of recipes and probably find one that you like better than what I'm doing, but this is what I've come down to over the years of pickling chicken's eggs, and well, mine's a bit different every time, depends on what I'm adding, I guess, but turn the fire on here. Two cups of vinegar. A half cup of water. A tablespoon of sea salt. I'm using that flak salt, flaked salt. That's a tablespoon of salt and a teaspoon of sugar. This thing has a mixture of stuff in it. The red powder that you can see on top is the Payamont Espelette, my own Espelette peppers that have been ground. And there's a couple of very small bay leaves, because that's all I have. I have a small bay leaf tree and two uh, Thai chilies that I split lengthwise rather than doing in those little circles so that they would be identifiable for anybody who doesn't like heat. It will impart some heat to the uh, to the eggs, but you don't end up with a little piece of the hot chili in your mouth, hopefully. A small onion and four small cloves of, of garlic, just chopped or thickly sliced, whatever. And you just bring that to a boil and then shut the heat off. So we'll come back when it's time to put them in the jar. Just stirring this, waiting for it to come to a boil, and I realize I don't think I mentioned the mustard seeds. I have a tablespoon of mustard seeds in there. The espelette, Piedmont espelette powder, will uh, turn things a bit on the red side, add some color to the to the brine, and it'll add its flavor. But if you've never had it before, uh, it isn't hot. It has a slight, very, very mild heat just adds a lovely flavor. It's these puppies that are hot and uh, that's why I left them in large pieces so they would be identifiable even though their seeds are going to come out. I just watched a video this morning from France on the Espelette and uh, my French is not perfect. I used to speak French. I still try. <laughs> I believe what they were saying is that with the espelette peppers it's not so much the seed as the white filament inside if there's going to be any heat. The, the heat in the espelette comes from the, the white filament. So that was kind of a surprise to me. Anyway, when this comes to a boil we will put it in the jar with the eggs. Well, as soon as this brine with the vegetables and whatever in with it came to a rolling boil I shut it off immediately. And now I'm going to, using this canning funnel, I'm going to put alternate layers of eggs and, and brine in the jar. I'm using a liter jar, or quart jar, or whatever, uh, which I don't think I need. I don't have that many eggs, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to be canning it. I'll just, if it doesn't fill it all the way to the top, then I'll put a cover on it and put it in the refrigerator, it won't, it won't hurt anything. But I thought that a pint jar, a 500 milliliter jar, was definitely going to be too small, so I went with the quart. It all smells good anyway. Careful now, I'm going to have brine coming out the top here. Oh, there. That's all the eggs in there. And I will try to get the rest of the... Try to get the rest of the vegetables in there with it. Oh, 
guess we'll, we'll call that quits. Oh, so that is them finished. I got a lid here somewhere to put on. There it is. It doesn't have to, I'm not worrying about it sealing or anything. I, I will let it cool down a bit to room temperature before I put it in the refrigerator, but it's not going to have to seal. And there we have, I never did get around to counting the eggs, but more than three dozen, I would say, somewhere close to four dozen quail eggs pickling. I'm looking forward to trying them. So if you have your own quail eggs, I hope you'll give it a try. And I'm really impressed with that uh, method for getting the peeling off of a hard-boiled quail egg. As I said before, I wish it was my own thought, but it isn't. Whoever thought that up was very clever. Well, thank you very much for watching.